um, uh, Mr. Governor, Mr. Cuomo, Mr. Governor Cuomo, what the hell do you call this guy? Mr. Mendrino. Uh, uh, th thank you so much for taking the time out to meet with me, Mr. Governor. You're not Governor Cuomo. No, I'm not. Uh, uh, about that, Mr. Mendrino. The governor's tied up and asked me to take this meeting for him. I'm Amanda Nicholas, and I'm one of the second undersecretaries on COVID compliance, regional small business liaison for the Southern District, and senior second vice chairwoman overseeing cabbage farming in Penn State, New York. Let's get to your issue. Okay, with all due respect, Madam Second Undersecretary, I was promised a meeting with Governor Cuomo. Frankly, sir, opening up comedy clubs is not really a high priority issue for the governor, so he's needed elsewhere. It took me nine days to get this meeting scheduled. And you have me, at least for the next four minutes. So are there any things you'd like me to relay to the governor? Well, essentially, he says that comedy clubs are not essential. And, and they're not. Mr. Mandrinos, they will be opened in due time. Please just be patient. Frankly, it's such a small demographic of people that this impacts. It's a low priority. You mean because there's not enough of us to impact an election? Your words, not mine, Mr. Mandrinos. Here's what I'm going to say. You may need to check your statistics. You know, downstate, a full 46% of all the residents of Brooklyn identify as stand-up comedians or improv actors. In Astoria, the number rises to 53%, with another 17% on top of that seeing themselves as storytellers. And in fact, of the 9 million voting age people in the downstate area, the five boroughs, Westchester, Long Island, a full, a full half are or, or want to be comedians. Downstate is literally infested with performers. Still. Yeah, and if the clubs remain closed and we all remain unemployed, we'll have nothing to do all day but to tweet and to post and to make adorable little memes like the one I just sent you of Gallagher smashing the governor like he's a watermelon. That is oddly disturbing. Yeah, well, we could just remix Dennis Leary's song, Asshole, with the governor's speeches? Well, your threats are impressive. The governor isn't afraid of some bad tweets, Mr. Mandrinos. He's taken on Trump. And as far as the notion that comedians will vote him out, I don't think a group as historically liberal as comedians will vote for a Republican in the governor's election. <laughs> You're right, they never vote for a Republican. But did I mention that we just started a draft AOC campaign to get her to run for governor of New York? You know, I happen to know where she could get a couple of million highly motivated campaign volunteers with a hell of a lot of free time. I see your point. And I'm sure once the governor is aware of the gravity of this situation, he'll come up with a plan to help. Well, thank you so much for your time, Second Undersecretary Nicholas. Thank you, Mr. Mandrinos. Man, these comedians are no joke. Looking for something new to watch? All Media TV, the home of independent content. Subscribe now. Get your free seven-day trial. Order in and binge watch one of our series. Laugh, cry, or crawl under the blankets with a variety of shorts and features. Subscribe now. Get your free seven-day trial. Watch anywhere, anytime, any device. Go to www.allmediatv.com today.